Hey, it's April from the Noble Garden. Today is exactly one year since we bought this house and this land. And I thought what better way to celebrate than let's talk about how things have gone for the first year. I am very proud of us. Um, this is our first time ever building a homestead up like this. Um, so there is a lot of trial and error. Um, there's a lot to learn. There's a lot of work. And I will tell you, if you are starting a homestead, know ahead of time it is not going to be done in a year you really need to spread it out make like a five-year plan and go with it in this video i'll be talking about what we did right what we did wrong and how we plan on improving um, our outcomes the very first thing i did when i moved here i've always been interested in making my own compost and all around me are trees i was super excited about losing leaves and making a compost pal however that compost pile that I made the very first time was not close to the house. There was no water source. Um, the only way it was going to get water was if I was to carry buckets of water and pour water on it. I learned very quickly that that was a bad idea. Uh, we did not water it. We didn't keep adding to it. It really did not do anything for us. Um, so we decided to make compost um, area. It's close to our house, it's close to our garden, and it has an excellent water source. It's also close to the chickens, so we add the chicken bedding to it. Um, it's, and we also have a lawnmower that we push and gather the grass, and it has worked a whole lot better. Let me show you what I'm talking about. These are now our compost piles. I am not going to go into a whole lot of detail with this. I do have video up about them. But this right here, guys, is what I'm talking about. This was growth. This was learning. This works better. Um, we're adding to it. It's decomposing. And we actually have plans to make two more as well. The other thing on our homestead is, is that we have the chickens in one location. And my plan is to move the chickens around so that they can graze and poop and you know, make good soil, um, add to the earth. However, my first coop that we built um, was built more for our lifestyle back when we lived on um, 1.33 acres in a neighborhood, you know, kind of thing. I was homesteading from that. So we will be building a coop that will better feed us to move it around. Um, the only thing I will tell you to do, we did right. This is electrical fence. This electrical fence has been amazing at, um, when used properly, it has protected our chickens. There's a couple times that we didn't use it properly, and yes, we did lose chickens. Um, and this is our first time out here, so we hadn't lost chickens to predators before then. However, the other thing I'll tell you is make sure your coop is secured. Um, snakes will kill chickens, even though you're told they won't, because they will if they are in the way for um eggs because i want to eat all the eggs and if the chickens guard in the eggs then the snake will kill the chicken we learned that this year um raccoons can open doors and animals can squeeze through smaller holes than you think they can so just make sure you're protecting your chickens we also learned to give shade to our chickens um just having chickens out here for the first year has been a learning experience i'm pretty sure we didn't learn it all and we're still gonna make mistakes with the chickens um but we have a better grass on it than we did before. Here is a quick view of our babies. We do have baby chicks in the house that we are also learning from, and we'll talk about that next. We did put an automatic door. Um, that has been a lifesaver because now we don't have to come out in the mornings and open the door or come at night and close the door. I will tell you something that we are doing wrong still, and with our new coop will be... Um, making sure but our doors are warped we cannot keep them closed half the times we had to put like that door on the left is completely um, screwed in because it's not a functional door anymore this door on the right is the only one that opens now and we have to put bricks in front of it all the time to keep it completely closed hoping that an animal can't get in I do feel more comfortable as long as the electrical fence is working that an animal is not going to get in there Don't now the off. baby chicks are in my house in oh a God. bin um and they're quickly outgrown that bin we learned we probably do need to build ourselves a brooder a real brooder What's before brooder? we do the next round of baby chicks because our setup right now is not really working 100 percent. i mean it's working we're making it work but there's got to be a better easier way we do not have a barn we're not having any more animals we have two dogs a cat and we're doing the chickens but my husband is not into 
the livestock part of homesteading. So we will not be having any more other animals. So we don't have a barn. Um, we do have a shed. Um, we're going to be building some more sheds. So maybe we could turn one of those into a brooder. But uh, right now we need to figure something else out. So this is the garden that we made and we used this summer and it worked really good. Um, I love the layout and um, we are actually expanding to where those 40 feet beds will now go on the other end. So there'll be I think six or seven or eight more of those. Um, but we are going to talk about crops in a little bit and what I can do better with them. So. This area right here was where the chickens were when we first moved here. Of course, we moved them up the hill because now we are working on um, our berry garden. So this will be a berry garden, garden beds that will extend on the other side. And then up on the hill up there, we're going to make a greenhouse. My husband, something that we've learned, so I'm going to show you this quickly and we'll talk about it, has made himself a water system to where when... Here, I'll show you. This is still a work in progress. He actually watered the garden from it the other day. So we know that his water system does work. So he's got an automatic timer on there that he is going to be hooking all the gardens up together and having a schedule on. Having a water system in place has actually been something I learned at the whole first homestead. The bigger your garden is, the more exhausting it is to water it. And if you spend two hours watered in the morning you're so done with the garden you don't want to go out there and um, tie your plants up prune your plants any type of plant care you don't feel like harvesting you it just takes all your energy so if you're going big i would most definitely think about some type of water system to help yourself out this little area right here that is on the platform that I built was supposed to be for my little greenhouse. We have decided to go ahead and move on from that greenhouse. But this will now be where a patio, um, an umbrella set kind of thing is going to be so that we can sit and enjoy the garden. So that was not my original plan. My original plan was I did want the greenhouse in the middle. However, I didn't leave enough space for a big one. So it's going to go up the hill, which I think is also a good spot for it. And I think a spot to sit and just rest for the afternoon or first thing in the morning and just enjoy the beauty of the garden. I don't think it's a bad idea. Um, you see people go to beautiful gardens to have picnics at. Why not have a picnic area kind of thing at my own garden? So I think I'm at a good place now where we can talk about plants and stuff like that. So my first run in with a mistake was my seedlings for the spring. I decided to try cocoa core only to save myself some money and I know that it can be done but I did not do it right and my seedlings were very slow to grow um, some of them didn't grow at all um, some of them were very leggy I bought actual grow lights and I used my shop lights something in these combinations did not work well and I had very weak plants that the spring actually did nothing however my summer plants actually did do very well um, but this last time that I did seeds, I did seeds in the fall for my fall crops and I did a mixture of cocoa core, peat moss and, um, worm castings. And that was a much better mixture. Oh, and I think for vermiculite, I added in it too. Anyways, the mixture was fine this time and it worked. However, I do not have my lights set up correctly um, and I do just indoors. So I need to work on that because now these plants were leggy, they were weak. And I think that that contribute to losing almost all of my crops in the late, or I'm sorry, losing all my crops in the early frost that we had. So that's a lesson learned. I need to figure out my seedlings. The plan is actually to have the greenhouse up and running before I need to do my summer seedlings, such as tomatoes and peppers. However, that early spring stuff, the lettuces and stuff like that, um, broccolis and cauliflowers and all that stuff, I'm gonna try again. Um, I'm gonna have to do indoors again, so hopefully I can do a better setup and get better results. Um, the other thing is, is that do your research on soil, then who you're getting it from and know what you're looking at. So the guy that I bought soil from, it was very good soil, very, very good soil. 
However, it was not completely broken down, and I think it was too rich, and some of my stuff struggled. Well, honestly, most of it struggled, and stuff just grew later, um, took longer to grow, and took longer to get results, and things were just lagging behind is the best way to say it. Um, however, when it did grow, it grew beautiful. This garden this summer was beautiful. So this year for this fall crops and for the berry garden I went with a different company um, and let me kind of show you what I'm seeing in this and tell you guys why I'm hoping and thinking it's gonna be better so this is the new soil and what I'm liking about it is look how crumbly it is it's very very black which is always a good sign but I think they have some sand in this, which a little bit of sand, not completely sandy, but a little bit of sand goes a long way because it helps with drainage. And when I feel this, it feels sandy um, and it's most definitely more broken down. Um, I like the feel of it better. So I'm hopeful for um, no uh, slowing down and not too rich. I am giving this soil a test because I do have fall crops in. Um, the other end where my fall crops did not die from the frost, um, they're in the old soil, but this other soil over here that's new, I'm going to be putting carrots and um, radishes in, and I put peas in. So I am kind of trying it out. I'm hoping that it has a better result. So now that we talked about soil stuff, we can talk about individual plants. All right, so let's talk more about individual plants. So when it comes to my tomatoes, this was hands down my best year yet. However, there are some things that need to be improved. Um, they all need to be trellis for me. I tried the um, Florida weave. Florida weave is not for me. I don't spend enough dedicated time out here or I wouldn't say I don't spend enough dedicated time because I dedicate a lot of time to my garden, but I'm just so busy with other things that I don't have time to Florida weave properly with a lot of tomato plants. I love my cattle panel setup. So that is what I'm gonna use for all my tomato plants. Um, and then I'm also gonna use the cattle panel setup for my pepper plants because Florida weaving them didn't work either and they ended up bent over and I could have got more from them if I had actually put them up better. Um, other plants, green beans. Green beans are usually a really fast growing crop. However, they were really slow for me this year because of the soil. So I'm hoping finding a better soil will help me with those. Um, the other crops, the cucumbers did really well. When it comes to the squash and the zucchini, I did learn that the BT, um, putting it in the stems, spraying the plants frequently, um, does help with the squash borer. So I want to be more proactive on making sure that I do BT, not if I don't do it every week, at least every other week and be more on top of it. Um, I wanna do more squash and zucchini this coming up year. So that's gonna be more work of staying on top of it. So I also grew potatoes and I learned something very helpful with my potatoes. Usually I'm very successful with potatoes, but in the past we've always done them in big, buckets because we didn't have a lot of room for them. I tried to put them in a bed this year. I will put them in another bed. Um, however, if they are calling for freezing temperatures, they need to be covered because we just had so much damage um, to them that they never really recovered. Um, so a lesson learned to cover your um, potato plants if it's gonna frost. Um, the other potato that we grew was sweet potatoes. And sweet potatoes, there's, the only thing I'm gonna do different is I'm actually gonna dedicate a whole 40 foot bed and let it grow in the bed, it's on the outside of the bed. Cause I learned that every place that it touches, it actually, they grow, they root and grow their own. And it's pretty cool what sweet potatoes can do and if you just let them go on their own. Um, I did harvest them a little early, so I'll give them a little bit more time. Um, one thing I actually plan on doing is grabbing them as I want to eat them and then letting them grow more until the frost. They are not frost hardy, so you do need to put, uh, pick 
sweet potatoes up before frost. Um, that was a lesson I learned as well because we had frost hit one section that was still left. Um, what else, guys? I have corn and me do not agree with each other. I will try corn again, but I think corn had a lot of trouble with the true rich of the soil. And so I will be working on that. Um, stop. Something else I wanted to improve on is being more on a schedule with pre for preventatives. And when I say preventative is, I mean, I love to organic garden. I'm not going to change that, but I do use essential oils and organic products to, um, help with bugs and diseases. And I want to be more on top of my neem oil sprays and more um, on my preventative, preventative copper sprays. Um, I did nematodes um, late spring. I've done it early fall. I plan on doing it again in the um, early of the spring and continue to update you guys on what, how I feel the nematodes are doing for me. But I want to stay more on top of bug pest control, pick eggs better, stuff like that to also help um, make my garden last longer. Um, but yeah, guys, I just, there's just a lot of things you learn, um, with the homestead, especially when it's new to you, um, in a new area. Cause we did decide to move three and a half hours away from where we originally lived. I don't regret that decision. I love it here. Um, the small community that we have around us are, they're really seem to be good people. Um, a good area to raise your kids. It's very quiet out here. We don't get bothered. Um, we just keep building on and. Anyone who comes out and sees this, they're really amazed with what we're doing. I'm amazed with what we're doing. I didn't know we had this in us. Um, I thank you guys so much for watching my videos. I hope that I can continue to improve. I hope that I can continue to um, show you guys enough to where I'm an inspiration to you guys. Just as much as you guys are inspiration to me. Um, I just thank you guys for watching and I hope you enjoy my one year anniversary talk because I know I talked more than anything else. We don't really have anything in the garden amazing to show you right now because the summer crops are done and they're over. We had a frost and it killed off anything else that was left. Um, I have a few kales over here beside me. I have uh, things that will overwinter like lavender. <laughs> Sorry guys. <laughs> <laughs> One thing about garden like this, you're going to have bugs that fly in your hair and scare the crap out of you. Anyways, that was funny. <laughs> yes, that was. That bug scared me. It really did. I heard a buzz and it I, landed in I, my hair. I, I really thought it was a stinger. Me too. Uh, um, we still have bees around. We have seen some of them. And I've actually been seeing like yellow jackets. They could be hornets. I'm not quite sure what they are. But yeah, we've seen some of those around us too. And I guess Napa here wants some attention. <laughs> so speaking of a homestead. And everything this girl right here look at the camera hey pretty girl hi <laughs> has learned a lot too in the last year um in our yeah, other land that we time. had we lived in a neighborhood you open the door she's gone she had to be on a leash or she had to be in a fence back in yard or she would just run away practically well this girl right here has learned to follow us around and she's learned to we don't even have any type of fence at all but for some reason, she like knows the boundaries of our land and she's done so good at staying close by. Um, I'm very proud of her. We are very, very proud of her. She has done very well learning. Um, thank you guys for watching. I won't take much of your, many more of your time. Um, continue to follow me this year. I'm hoping to show you guys everything that we're doing and continue to update you on our adventures at the homestead. Thank you. Bye. Bye guys. Bye. Bye.